This video is sponsored by Brilliant. I said a little while ago I started the construction process of these project panels. These are basically sheets of wood that house a bunch of tools that are used for the projects on the channel. And these are actually mounted onto monitor arms so it keeps the entire work surface clean and accessible. And it also allows cameras to shoot over the top of it and lights to shine underneath it. And that's why I built these things because I'm building a fabrication desk setup. But because I film stuff for the channel it kind of needs to align with that as well. Which is why it's in this format. But there are some issues in regards to the project panel as it stands right now, mainly in regards to its modularity. So if we inevitably start switching out tools for different variants or different tools entirely to fit certain workflows in the future, maybe because we get new machines and that kind of stuff, then we basically have to print the entire plate again. And, you know, there's a couple of things that I thought of. Like I wanted to create a drop in placement at a certain point in the process where you have a grid finity grid, but it's, you know, a lot deeper into the, the wooden thing. And that's really nice about this project panel. It's quite deep, so there's a lot of room inside of the panel itself where you could route cables and that kind of stuff. But the problem with this good finity idea is that it takes a bunch of filament to create those drop-ins and then even more filament to actually, you know, allow the good finity stuff to, to be mounted in place. At a certain point, I even considered making smaller cubes and having it magnetically connect onto each other, just like you would see in those little keypad things. I, I don't remember the name of it exactly, but I'll show it on screen right here. And yeah, that idea got scrapped for the same reason. I mean, it takes a bunch of material to actually do that and it's not efficient enough. I, I watched this video from Cam as well, who created this desk setup, which was inspired by somebody on Instagram. Basically, you use sit-stand legs to create a hidden work surface, but it also had a pegboard on there, so you can't really shine a camera underneath of it or like create that depth that I have in my videos a lot of the time, where there's a lot of room behind the work surface itself. And I do really like that idea though. And I am thinking of creating like a mini fabrication desk setup where that is implemented, but then with a project panel. So we're sticking with the idea of a project panel, which is, you know, that's it. It works, it's really great, but it needs a different format. And I was never really sold on Grid Affinity until I received this package from Solder. So Solder is a Swedish based startup and they're creating this really tiny open source modular soldering kit. And it's based around two metal sheets, which are on the outside. And then on the inside, there's a smaller Grid Affinity system and all of the things like, you know, snap into, into place. And when I was playing around with this, I was super impressed by this. Now with the solder station, you can open up and use the base as, you know, a magnetic work surface, which is just incredible. And this kind of gave me this idea of like, okay, let's try and implement grid affinity into a project panel in a similar way, where it's also magnetic with some uh, metal things. But this solder thing is brilliant, just like the sponsor of this video. So if you like breaking stuff down, understanding how they work, just like we do on the channel here, Brilliant is a really awesome platform and you should definitely check it out. So initially I didn't really think that Brilliant had a whole lot to offer us makers, but it's actually super useful if you're a maker in the, in the DIY space as well. So they have a ton of interactive courses on data analysis, how AI works, science, math, that kind of stuff, but also really simple topics like circuits. And circuits is super useful for us makers, of course, because we sometimes need to do projects with electronics. And this really freshed up my memory as to how all of this stuff works and how we maybe implement that into projects in the future as well. So Brilliant is really awesome in a way that they actually allow you to interact with the learning process itself instead of it being very passive. So if you're watching a video, that's a very passive way of learning. But Brilliant actually makes you you know solve the problems yourself and that really helps the information stick in, in your memory a lot better. It's super fun to actually interact with it and I found that it's very easy to replace with uh, doom scrolling, for example. So anytime, you know, you're mindlessly scrolling on social media, you instead you just open the Brilliant app and you're actually learning something useful instead of wasting time. You can start learning for free on Brilliant by heading over to brilliant.org slash flatlandertech or scanning the QR code on screen. I'll leave a link in the description down below as well. And they're giving us a 20% discount off an annual premium subscription as well, which unlocks full daily access to everything Brilliant has to offer. So I headed over to the hardware store, got myself some metal sheets and these come in pre-cut sizes of 25 by 50 centimeters, which is actually perfect because those are, you know, exactly in line with grid affinity grids. So they're not actually as thick as I wanted them to be. So these are 0 0.75 millimeter and I wanted them to be one mil, but those weren't available in the hardware store. But basically we can model this out in shape of 3D and then start creating the corner pieces for them. And I think it seems so the sheets are a little bit flexible that we need some center pieces for this as well. And then that way we can mount the grid affinity system onto this. I actually really like these corner pieces in the way that they stick out. So they look like fenders essentially to keep stuff from dropping down and getting damaged or like the cubes that you find in Portal, for example. So what I often do is model the rough shape and then I give them a bunch of chamfers. Think about the mounting solution. So in this case, we're just using a five mil bolt 
that's going through the metal sheet and the 3D print. So I'm leaving the top segment of this corner piece open so the Quidfinity grid can drop into that and then we'll create another little mount which actually hooks onto the Quidfinity system somehow and holds that in place. As for the holders that are in the middle, these are basically copies of the corner pieces but then with the sides kind of bashed out, mirrored one end of it and then unified that and got rid of the chamfers over here. I also 3D printed some of these little templates which will help us drill the holes in the proper spot on the metal sheet. And I put a piece of wood underneath the drill bed so that the metal sheets don't start bending and that helps a little bit with tear out as well. Last time around I actually wanted to put lights in the project panels as well. But then when I was busy with the smaller project panels I actually started filling up the holes with actual gear and that kind of stuff. So I never ended up putting any lights in there. But on this project panel I'd actually like to put a lead strip around the mount for the base mount plate. So I found a super cheap lead strip with a battery bank. So the whole panel can be very modular in the sense that you can grab it and then move it to a different arm. Or at least that was the idea because I had this plan of making it magnetic. In the end, I decided that that was going to be a total pain to deal with because then it will be shifting all of the time and it wouldn't look good at all. So I went for a more standard base mount integration. At this point, I did consider actually putting a sheet of multiplex in the center just to keep the rigidity a little bit higher because the sheets of metal are quite thin. But in this case, I'm just modeling out a centerpiece which is going to be 3D printed and that's going to hold the bolts in place and also allow the lead strip to be wrapped around it. So if you enjoyed the video so far, then definitely consider leaving a like, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. If you don't subscribe, then you might never see another one of my videos because it doesn't end up in your suggested feed. So I also have a Patreon page where I upload all of the designs, all of the ship 3D files. So if you would like to support the channel even further, keep this channel going sustainable, maybe rely less on sponsors, for example, then definitely consider checking that out. The corner pieces were actually surprisingly easy to put in that spot. I was expecting because we drilled holes into the metal sheet that it would be bent a little bit and it would be totally impossible to get the corner pieces on there. But yeah, they just drilled them in and everything seemed to be working okay. So at this point we can move on to the grid finity system and I used this online tool to actually create a grid. It's 6x6, six six, so 252 by 252 which is, you know, just one millimeter over the metal sheet. I kind of like that. And then I created these little buckets and modified those as they're a step far into the little corner pieces. The corner pieces, they're, yeah, I, I'm not entirely sold on this yet because basically you take one cube out of the Gridfinity system, right? I could create some custom baskets, which we'll do in a, in a little bit. To actually fit this but it would have been way nicer if we could mount this in a different way sometimes it's really fun to actually accommodate hardware that doesn't fit this exactly so in this case i have bolts which are far too long and i'm not really interested in going to the store to buy bolts which are exactly the right size for this so i'm just upping this little corner piece a little bit and rounding it over giving it some chamfer so it looks kind of funky After we've printed out the grids and the corner pieces, we can put the grids in place first and then attach the corner pieces to the bolts that were just threaded through the project panel. And this is a little bit difficult because I didn't make them the proper size. Like I just made them M5 instead of giving them a little bit more room. So it threads into the 3D print straight away. It wasn't necessary because there is going to be a bolt at the top as well. Somehow I also miscalculated the length of the bolt, which I am absolutely sure that I measured it and designed it in the CAD to be exactly the same length, but somehow it's sticking out quite a lot. I once I put it on a monitor arm, I was really liking the industrial looks that this thing was giving off. And so I'm integrating a fair few really standard tools into this just to see if it works out and you know place it on a desktop, see how we utilize it. We can always print extra additions later. 
I'm starting off with the Vera Mini Ratcheting Screwdriver. I really like this thing for how compact it is and also the ratcheting mechanism. If you turn it that way or twist it that way, that's also the way that you're ratcheting in the, the bolt or the screw. The implementation of it is fairly standard. I just have a magnet at the bottom of this little Quidfinity cube and then there's a holder in place because the panel is going to be slanted a little bit. So that makes it a little bit easier to slide in its spot. When I printed it all out and put it in its spot, I noticed that there is quite a bit of wobble on the project panel itself. And that has to do with the weight of it, so it's quite a lot lighter than the other panel. So even though it looks a little bit more solid, it doesn't feel as solid as the other ones. The next thing we're implementing is something that I should probably implement into every single project panel because it's something I always lose and it's pencils or some kind of marking method. I actually made a tape measure once with the marker like inbuilt and that way I wouldn't lose them and just made a small little basket but I modified it so that it would actually fit the corner piece and then that way we can make a little bit more optimal use of the entire project panel. In terms of the magnets that I'm putting in here, I'm using 10mm magnets, which the Quidfinity generator doesn't actually support, so that goes up to 8.2. And there's probably a reason for that. I think 10mm is a little bit overkill. It really snaps on there really quite solid, which is nice, but it's not as cost effective as using smaller ones. Of course, the Vera Mini Ratchet also needs some bits on it, and I created a 4 block cube for the Quidfinity system. And this will be two components. So we have the top one and the bottom one, and this just so we can put the magnets in the proper spot to hold the bits in place. And I put a chamfer on all of the bit holders over here so that it's super easy to put the bits back into its spot. So next up is a caliper. I actually have 3D scans of all of these tools already from different projects. So if you're wondering how 3D scanning works, then definitely, you know, check out some other videos that I've done on it in the past. It's probably easier to use one of those marker pads where it converts it into an SVG file straight away. But in this case, I'm just using the pen tool to outline it and create a drop-in placement. Putting all of these pads in place on the project panel, I am really liking the look of it. I'm not sure how cost-effective it is compared to the wooden version. Initially you would say that this is maybe cheaper because the metal sheets are like 5 euros a piece but then we have those hidden things like the magnets for example or 10 euros so maybe it comes out to a little bit more but let me know in the comments what you think and let me know if you'd like to see this project panel on the you know fabrication desk at the build or the other project panel and which one you like the most so I hope this video gave you some inspiration hope it helps you out and hopefully see you in the next video